Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How's everybody today? Are you blessed and highly flavored? Are you the salt and the light? Amen. 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 Praise God. You know, we, we shared before what salt does. One of the things about salt is it, it stings. Stings. Everyone say salt stings. Salt stings. <laughs> it also preserves. And it also causes you to be thirsty. Amen. See, there's something about being thirsty and hungry for God's righteousness. Those who thirst and hunger for his righteousness shall be filled. Filled with what? His spirit. Filled with what? His spirit. Because without being filled with the spirit, the enemy over, over, always overtakes you, deceives you easy. God's presence is essential in our lives. We should be lovers of God's presence more than anything. God's presence to you and to myself should be the number one desire that we have. I want more of your presence, Lord. I want more of your presence. I want more. When something comes between you and God's presence, it becomes an idol. Yes. In other words, a desire is important. So we should desire God's presence. See, you can say, I want God's presence, but you, do you desire God's presence? Those are two different things. There's a lot of people that want. The Lord says, the word says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, or that word means lack. But those who seek the kingdom of God and God's righteousness, all things will be added on to us. They'll be added on. Why? Because it comes from God, not from man. Not that God won't use man, but we know that the source is God in everything, but God uses resources in this realm. We, there's an area right now, especially what's going on, in, in all areas where you and I need to be positionally set in divine order in an area because there are divine opportunities that God is releasing and many people are missing them. He wants us to grab hold of every divine opportunity, but divine opportunities are established by our obedience, our consistency, being alert. Three things, he gave us a formula. You want a divine opportunity? Deny yourself. Pick up the cross and fight, and then you can follow. Once you follow, you'll go into a divine opportunity. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Ecclesiastes 3. In verse 1, you know, one of the things in our, in our Friday night anointing service this Friday, while we were worshiping and praising and getting filled and refreshed, and one of the things the Holy Spirit said to me, he said, many people want to touch from me. Many people want to touch from the Lord, but they want to touch from the outside. He says, if you'll seek my face and worship me with all of your might, I'll touch you from the inside. Because see, his desire is to be touched on the inside. That's where a changed heart comes. That's where everything changes. Being touched from the inside. That's where your desires change. Because what's happening when you and I worship the Lord, we are exchanging our presence for his. A moment the person picks up his own presence, there's a whole different attitude. There's a whole different vision. There's a whole different sight. People hear differently, see differently, and their sight is short. As soon as a person picks up their own presence again, because that presence that you and I carry of the old is offensive to God. It's offensive. You want to grieve the Holy Spirit? Walk in your own presence. Is everybody with me? There's that place of exchange. So many opportunities are missed because people are not willing to exchange their presence. Because they don't get in, in God's presence enough. The lack of God's presence causes weakness. It's weak. A person gets weak. We're to be strengthening our inner man. Remember, God wants to touch your insides and change your insides. Change of heart. The more we worship, the more we get filled. 
But again, you can come and worship, but really not desire to be touched or filled or desire to have righteousness be manifested in your life. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 1, what does it say? It says, to everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck what is planted, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, a time to build up, a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, a time to gather stones, a time to embrace, a time to refrain from embracing, a time to shut up, oh. a time to gain. A time to obey, a time to lose, <laughs> a time to keep, a time to throw away, a time to tear, a time to sow, a time to keep silent. Yeah, that's the one. A time to speak, a time to love, a time to hate, a time of war, a time of peace. What profit has the worker from that, that at which he labors? I have seen the God-given task with which the sons of men are to be occupied. He has made everything beautiful in its time. Everyone say, in its time. When it's God's time, it's God's will. Also, he has put eternity in their hearts, except that no one can find out the work that God does from the beginning to the end. I know that nothing is better for them than to rejoice and to do good in their lives. And also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of his labor. It is a gift from God. So we see here that there is a time and a season, isn't there? There's a time and a what? Season. I know that whatever God does in verse 14, it shall be forever. Nothing can be added to it and nothing taken from it. God does it. Everyone say, God does it. That men should fear before him. That which, is, that which is, has already been and that which is to be has already been. And God requires a what? An account of what is past. So we see here that there is a time and a season. These times and the seasons that God has established for me and you are predestined. Divine opportunities. They're predestined. There's a time and a season. And of course, there's an account. You and I must be account of obedience. Because obedience is required for divine opportunities. Without obedience, we miss divine opportunities. God loves surprising his children. He loves it. You just never know when it's going to happen. But if you're not in position to receive that divine opportunity, we miss it. Romans 12. Romans 12. <clears throat> divine opportunities. In verse 1, <clears throat> let's speak it together. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you what? Present your bodies a what? Living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service or your responsibility. So that's where we are exchanging ourselves. You are giving of yourself to him. Amen? You're submitting your spirit, soul, body, and presence to the Lord as a living sacrifice to serve him, honor him, and express him. In verse 2, do not be conformed to this world, but be what? Transformed. Transformed by the renewing of your mind. This is the renewing of your thoughts. Why? Because that's where the attack is. That's where the influence is. That you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. I want you to know that there's four types of divine opportunities. Confirmation. <laughs> there's the good, there's the acceptable, 
and there's that perfect. That's three of them. Good, acceptable, and perfect opportunity, divine opportunities. But the fourth one is called a missed one. So there's good, perfect, uh, good, acceptable, and what? Perfect and what? Missed. Four opportunities. Missed divine opportunities that are assembled by God. These divine opportunities are always assembled by God, right? To create divine appointments. They're to create what? Divine appointments. Intervention. And blessings. Three things. Four things, actually. Or three things. So divine appointments that are assembled by God are to create divine... Uh, divine opportunities that are assembled by God are to create divine op appointments. Intervention. Or is a divine intervention? And divine blessings. Oppor appointments, interventions, and blessings. Every one of these <clears throat> follow divine order. I think we just shared a few minutes ago about divine order. Divine order. What's divine order? Deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow. In other words, kingdom, business, purpose, and destiny is always first. Kingdom, business, purpose, and destiny. And whatever you and I do. Is everybody okay? Do I need to repeat that? Four types of opportunities, good, acceptable, perfect, and missed. When divine with divine opportunities, these are assembled by God to create divine appointments, intervention, and blessings. But they all must be fo uh, followed by divine order. And again, that is to deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow. So that means bi kingdom business, purpose, and destiny must be first. If it isn't first, we're not in divine order. And we will miss opportunities. You can create your own. Amen? You can create your own opportunities. But I'd rather have it when it comes from Dad. Acts 17. Acts 17. How many of y'all know there's a difference between a good deal and a God deal? <laughs> One's a divine opportunity, the other one's a self one. Amen? You know, the enemy's not stupid. He tries, he comes to deceive us, doesn't he? He wants to deceive us. He wants to get us into a place where we miss God's opportunities, the divine opportunities. <clears throat> Many people miss an escape from something. Amen? In verse 22, <clears throat> let's speak it then Paul stood in the midst of the um, Areopagus and said men of Athens I perceive that in all things you are what very religious in other words they were worshiping for as I was passing through and considering the objects of your worship I these are called idols I even found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God. Therefore, the one whom you worship without knowing him, I proclaim to you. God who made the world and everything in it, since he is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands, nor is he worshiped with men's hands as though he needed anything, since he gives to all life, breath, and all things. And he has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on the face of the earth, and has predetermined their what? Pre-appointed times, in other words, these are pre-appointed divine opportunities and boundaries of their dwelling so that they should seek the Lord and hope that they might grope for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as also some of your own poets have said, for we are also his what? His offspring. Since... Therefore, since we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the divine nature is like gold or silver or stone, something shaped by art and man's devising. Truly, these times of ignorance God has overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to what? 
Repent, turn from these things, because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained. He has given assurance of this to all by raising him from the dead. Now, this is powerful because these objects of worship were known as idols of the heart. <clears throat> idols of the heart come by desires. Amen? These idols are desires out of divine, they're taken out of divine time <coughs> and divine order. When an individual, remember he says he sets a boundaries up. These boundaries are established. When we step over the boundaries, we stepped over the boundaries <coughs> of time and season. Time and season. And it opens the door of opportunities to sow in the flesh instead of sowing in the spirit. I'm going to say that again, that because he, Paul said, man, these people are religious. Well, they were worshiping idols, weren't they? So they had a form of godliness, but denying the power. And in this, idols were before them. They were worshiping these idols instead of seeking the Lord. <clears throat> you know, when you seek the Lord, there should always be an area of willing to hear. And willing to hear must come to an area to where you're willing to obey what you hear. Amen. Now, <clears throat> these objects of worship are idols of the heart which promote and release desires it's because of a person or people are out of divine order and they are taken out of the boundaries. They overcome, they go out of the boundaries of time and see and open the doors of sow in the flesh. Genesis 4. How many of y'all know it takes endurance to wait for a divine opportunity. Amen. Genesis 4 and verse 3. <clears throat> In the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of fruit of the ground to the Lord. Abel also brought the firstborn of his flock of their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering, but he did not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was very angry, and his countenance fell. So the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry, and why has your countenance fallen? If you do what? Well. If you do well. If you obey, will you not be accepted? In other words, if you do what you already know what to do. Now, I want you to know that Cain already knew what to bring to the Lord. But he brought the works of his own hand instead of blood. Because God showed Adam and Eve already what to do before they left the garden. God killed an animal. In other words, he said, this is acceptable to me. And covered them with the skins. So God already showed Adam and Eve what to do. Has everybody got it? You don't think Adam and Eve showed their sons what to do? Yes, they did. One was submissive and one was rebellious. Amen? <clears throat> so in this, the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry and why is your countenance fell? If you do well, if you do it right, you can, you can turn this around and do it right. Will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, what lies at the door? Sin. Sin lies at the door, the presence of evil to come to steal, kill, and destroy. And it's what? Desire. desire. It has a desire. The presence of evil has a desire. Is for you, but you shall what? You shall rule over. Again, God, uh, <laughs> God offered a divine opportunity. Does everybody get it? God offered a divine opportunity for both of them. Cain offered his desire. Abel offered the blood of the lamb, obedience. That was taught by Adam. One rejected another accepted. Warning to Cain was that the desire still awaits at that open door. Be careful. So God was expressing, you can have another opportunity to get this right and shut this door. Amen? Instead, he killed his brother. You know why? He never shut the door. He never shut that door. Doors are open permanently until you repent and turn from it. You can repent all you want. That door will stay open. 
Because full repentance is to turn from it. Amen? So God gave Cain an opportunity to escape evil influence by following divine order. Amen? Amen. Oh, does everybody get this? <clears throat> In Galatians chapter 5. In verse 7, Galatians 5, 7. Divine opportunities. What does it say? Can we speak this together, please? You ran well. Who hindered you from obeying the, the truth? This persuasion does not come from him who calls you. A little leaven leavens a whole lump. A little agreement <laughs> grows into a bigger agreement. I have confidence in you, in the Lord, that you will have no other mind or thoughts, but he who troubles you shall bear his own judgment, whoever he is. And I, brethren, if I still preach circumcision, why do I still suffer persecution? Then the offense of the cross has ceased. I could wish that those who trouble you would even cut themselves off. For you, brethren, have been called to freedom, liberty. Only do not use this freedom or liberty as a what? opportunity for the flesh. Why? What is he saying? Look, at you're walking in freedom. If you step over the boundaries, you're going to sow in the flesh. But through love, serve one another. Powerful. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, beware lest you be consumed by one another. In other words, don't use the freedom in the spirit to open a door of opportunity to sow in the flesh by doing something out of time or season or divine order. Amen? Romans 13. <clears throat> Remember, we are in a season right now that is, I want to say, powerfully awesome. We are expecting the early and latter rain to be released. Many things are about to release. We are in a time of double There'll be double exposure, double blessings. We are on, it's already been birthed. It's come in. It's here available to all. Now we got to walk in it. We got to proclaim it and walk in it. But again, that formula, deny yourself, pick up the cross and follow. Because there's going to be many false opportunities that the enemy is going to send to our way. Why? To sway us from divine opportunity. Listen, the devil's not stupid. Even when we make stupid mistakes, and thank God, <laughs> he rescues us. If we're listening or hearing, amen, if we're following. But he's out to remember to steal, kill, and destroy us. And the number one thing he always wants to do is steal your identity. If he can steal your identity, believe me, you've stepped over the line and forgot who you were. And then you begin to think about who you used to be, and those old desires come back. The old man cannot follow the Lord. Has everybody got it? He cannot, and he will not. The mind can never be renewed in the old man. He must stay crucified. Glory. Hallelujah. So we don't want to use freedom in the uh, in the, in the spirit to open any doors of false, of false opportunities to sow in the flesh. Amen? Amen? Romans 13, verse 8, please. What does it say? Oh, no one anything except love one another, for he who loves another has fulfilled the law. For the commandments... You shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you sh shall not bear false witness, you shall not covet. And if there is any other commandment, <clears throat> are all summoned up in the saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor, therefore love is, ful is the fulfillment of the law. And do this, knowing the time that now is high time to awake out of sleep. For now we first, when we... Then, wait a minute. For now, our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. <clears throat> the night is far spent, the day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. 
Let us walk properly as in a day, not in revelry and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. In other words, stepping over the boundaries. But the first word here he talks about, he says, Oh, no one anything. See, the enemy likes to bring opportunities for debt. Amen? Amen. Debt. I hate debt. I come against that spirit of debt every day. <laughs> you ain't getting me in debt, homie. We got to come against it. We don't want debt. Amen? Now, don't get me wrong. There, there are things that God is telling us to purchase. Amen? And when he told us to buy the homes, he said that he would take care of it. We had to get a mortgage for the homes. Amen? But mortgages for homes should be investments in that arena. Amen? And not only that, it's a place of living. <laughs> you need a place to live, number one. Amen? And of course, you always need transportation, but you don't want to tr go in debt for transportation. You want to be removed from all debt. You know, think about what, remember Jesus gave the prayer, he said, the Our Father prayer, what does it say? Forgive me of my what? Debts. We know that's associated with sin too, but debts, debts prevent people from missing divine opportunities. You may be in debt for something and then something comes, comes around and you can't get it. And we're, right now we are in a season where God is releasing divine opportunities. Not to fulfill the flesh, but to fulfill his kingdom and everything that we're doing. He wants us to prosper, and there's nothing wrong with prospering. There's nothing wrong with having nice things, but he doesn't want us to be in debt. That's not his desire nor his will. Amen? And so many people are going to debt. It's amazing how many times I hear so many people say, yeah, the Lord blessed me with a car. Really? Praise God. Yeah, my payments are $1,200 a month. Well, that ain't that. What are you, nuts? No. God doesn't want us in debt. We avoid debt. Amen? And everything that we can do, we want to avoid. It says, oh, no one, if possibly, stay out of debt and pay off your previous ones, which is divine order. Many fall into bondage of debt and miss divine opportunities. Amen? Listen, if, if, if you owe a lot of money somewhere, amen, or you owe somebody money, take care of it. Don't go out and get in debt. That's out of divine order. We want things divine. Why? Because we want divine opportunities in everything that we do. Everything. God will bless your socks off. He'll even give you red sneakers. I'm telling you, his favor is for us. Amen? He, but he says, be led. Don't be pushed. Don't let your soulish desires overcome the desires of the spirit. Amen? Glory to God. Is everybody okay? Well, everybody's still here, so that's good. <laughs> First Corinthians chapter 10. You know, we just came out of the Feast of Trumpets. And, and, and from the time of the... Uh, solar eclipse that came across the U.S. From that point on, it was considered like the Passover. We've been in 40 days of repentance. And now we're celebrating the Feast of Yom Kippur. Kippur. Yom, yeah, Yom Kippur, which is a Feast of Atonement, which is known as repentance. Why? God is requiring all of us to come out of the area of not only debt, but bondage. And coming out of darkness and coming out of sin. Coming out of associations that promote sin. He's calling us to come out of all of these things. Why? So we can receive what he has for us. You know, he says love all, but he says hate evil. Depart from evil. We're to depart from evil. We're not to approve of things that God, 
Don't approve of something God disapproves of. Amen? Because if you do, you're out of position. And if you're out of position, you're out of divine order. And every time God tries to get something to you, the enemy has legal access to steal it before you can get it. He's got legal access to steal it before you can get it. 1 Corinthians 10, 12. Associations bring, bad associations bring impartations that are bad too. Bad company corrupts good habits, right? So associations will bring impartations. So you hang around those that are right in divine order with God. In verse 12. Therefore let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. No temptation is overtaking you except such as common to man. But God is what? Faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the, the temptation will, will what? Also make the way of what? Escape. Divine intervention. That you may be able to what? Bear it. Therefore, my beloved, flee from what? Idolatry. Why? Because those are idols, aren't they? I speak as to wise men, judge for yourselves what I say. Divine opportunity. God, that's a, listen, God makes a way of escape for divine opportunities. Get out. He'll open the door, which seems to be like, whoa. You didn't think about it. Divine opportunities. One of them is an escape. Escape from what? Escape from a trap. That's called intervention. That's called what? Intervention. You know, I, I, not only was I saved by God's mercy and for his grace, that's just his plan. But I'll save and rest you because of the prayers of the saints. And because of the prayers of the saints, there was divine intervention. Amen? I had a praying mother, and I had a praying and other people around them, family and friends. I used to get calls when I was out there doing stuff that I shouldn't have been. They used to call my house and tell my parents, I'm pray we're praying for your son. I never knew who they were. Still don't know who they were. I finally got so desperate one day, I called a prayer line myself and said, pray for me. 30 days later, I had a visitation from the Lord. Amen. Praise God. So prayer works. Amen. Divine intervention. Hallelujah. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. You know, and strange things happen when you're in divine order. <laughs> because he's now establishing your steps. I'll, I'll never forget one day that I kept praying, Lord, what am I supposed to do? And I just got saved. I was in debt. Debt. I mean debt. And I said, Lord, what do I do? And, of course, everybody around me was kept telling me, man, you do, do not file bankruptcy. I said, well, Lord, what do you want me to do? He said, file bankruptcy. He said, I want you to use the laws of the land. Now, you got to hear from God. I'm not telling everybody to go out and file bankruptcy. Amen? Amen. you got to hear from God. And I said, well, Lord, I, the, I, you got to show me what to do. I'm driving my car. It breaks down. It dies on me. Pulled over to the side of the road and think, well, maybe I ran out of gas. So I grabbed a gas can because most of the cars I drove, the gas gauge didn't work. So, and so I went into this Cumberland Farms, this convenience store, and I walked in there and there was this new, mini newspaper there and it says, file for bankruptcy. <laughs> I'm like, what? And I picked this thing up and I opened it and I, and I read it and, I, and I'm like, is this what you want me to do? And he said, yes. I went back to my car I was going to put gas in my car. I realized, man, there's gas in here. And I went in and started up and took off. I got a hold of this attorney. It was like 250 bucks. And when I went to go meet with him, he was a backslidden believer. I got to minister to him and talk with him. Anyways, I got it all done debt-free. Why would I want to go back in debt again? Amen. Why would I want to go back in debt? 
And, I, and one of the things that we want to do is pay off debts, you know. Pay off all kinds, whatever it is. If God's putting on your heart to get something done, do it. Don't let the enemy sway you to go do something else. I mean, get it done. Why? Because he's just trying to bless your socks off. You know, one of the things people have a hard time with is fear. Fear. Listen, remember, your finances are his. Your money's his, not ours. Lord, what do you want me to do with your money? That's what I say to him all the time. Okay, Lord, what do you want me to do with this? And sometimes he'll tell me, hold on to this because it's for someone or something. Or sometimes he just says, hold on to it, and I'll tell you what to do with it. And so I wait. And I wait. And I wait. And then something will come up. A divine opportunity will come up. And he'll say, this is what I told you, why I told you to put that money aside. I said, okay. And bam, somebody gets blessed. Or I get blessed. Or however it is. But it's staying in that divine order all the time. How many of y'all know that you can gain God's trust or lose it? Amen. Amen. And he wants to bless our socks off. He wants us to walk in the power of his might. He wants us to be an example to others. <clears throat> but being in debt is not an example. Amen? Amen? Oh, hallelujah. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 1. Let's speak it. But concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord comes as a thief in the night. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman. Now, remember that we just had a pregnant woman in the skies that just gave birth. Amen? Praise God. And they shall not what? Escape. But you, brethren, are not in darkness. We're not in darkness. We should see these things through. So that this day should not overtake you as a thief. You are sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of the darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep. Let us not become complacent, compromising, or lazy. Let us continue to battle and push through. Amen? Let us not sleep. sleep for, uh, for those who sleep... Uh, what, let us not sleep as others do, but let us be what? Watch and be sober, alert, vigilant. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith, love, and helmet, the hope of salvation. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through Christ, through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us. Whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him, we're to comfort one another and edify one another just as we are doing right now. Amen? Edifying one another. Has anybody ever made a mistake? <clears throat> anybody ever buy something out of God's time and season? Amen. Oh, boy. Yeah. But thank God he does <laughs> Thank God he turns it all to the good. Amen? Amen. Because you love him. Amen? <laughs> 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Remember, those in darkness, though, these people are going to miss what God is trying to do to them. Amen? And do for them. They're going to miss the way of escape. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Glory to God. Man, I bought a couple lemons myself, let me tell you. And you know, you can buy something that doesn't put you in debt, but it still not, not, might not be what God is asking you to purchase. Amen? Just because you can purchase it doesn't mean it's from God. That's why you want confirmation on everything. You want to marry the right person? Hello? You want to buy the right car? You want to buy the right house? You want to purchase the right things? Why? Because when it's divine ordered, because you're in divine position, and it's divine opportunity, God takes care of it. 
Amen? God takes care of it. Other than that, then we got to take care of it. Or, in other words, of course, we take care of whatever because he uses us in that arena, but he provides for it. Glory. Verse 9. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 9. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be what? What did they do? They rejected, didn't they? Did they reject the divine opportunity to escape? Yes. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie, that they may all be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in what? Unrighteousness. Wow. They rejected a divine opportunity to escape, and now they're caught. Galatians 6. Galatians 6. Many miss the divine opportunity of getting baptized in the Holy Spirit. God wants us to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. He wants us to manifest in the gifts of the Spirit. He wants us to speak in tongues. He wants us to lay hands on the sick. He wants us to cast out devils. He wants it. It's his desire. In verse 1, Galatians, Galatians 6, verse 1. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, <clears throat> and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one examine his own work or desire, then he will have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. For each one shall bear his own what? His own load. <laughs> Let him who taught the word share in all good things with him who teaches. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever man sows, he shall reap. He who sows it a flesh shall reap corruption, but he who sows it a spirit shall reap everlasting life. And let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Therefore, as we have what? Opportunity. Let us do good to all, especially to those who are of the household of faith. Remember, your currency of heaven is faith. Amen? That is the currency of heaven. That's why everything must be done in faith. So when we have opportunity to sow into the kingdom... That means you're going to reap something. Many times, let me share with you, when you're sowing into the kingdom, you will reap divine opportunities. Does everybody get it? Everyone say, when I sow in the kingdom, I reap divine opportunities. opportunities. Woohoo! James 1. James chapter 1. In verse 2, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials or do something stupid. <laughs> Knowing that the testing of your what? Your faith, your connection produces what? Patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. And if, you, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be what? Given, Given to him. In other words, look at count it all joy when we do something we shouldn't. Amen? Amen. Repent and turn. Repent and do what? Turn. turn. And return what you purchased. No. <laughs> With patience, endure, right? We're going to endure no matter what. Listen, you may have bought something and it doesn't work. Return it. Amen? Return it. My wife returns stuff. Man, I get packages all the time. Miss CVS, I'm telling you. 
No, what is it? QVC, that's it, not CVS. I'm telling you, and she's a sales girl. She buys these things, and they're good things. You know, these homemaker things that do things real nice and whatever. And And when it don't work, she returns it, let me tell you. (laughs) And I'm like, man, is this a divine appointment or what? Is this a divine opportunity? And then she'll say, look how this works. And it makes things more convenient, but it's not debt. Amen? It's not debt. Philippians 4. <laughs> she bought this, um, what do you call that, hon? Air fryer. Thing is power. I mean, like you know, I'm thinking another box comes in. I said, really? And so I, I, I don't know where I don't know where I was. And, and there's people in my kitchen, and she's giving everybody a taste of what she just cooked. This air fryer, this broccoli that does things crisp, cauliflower. Yeah, cauliflower. And so I'm like, man. She goes, here, try some of this. I said, all right. I taste it. And I said, whoa, this is phenomenal. I mean, and you just put like a drop of oil in it or whatever it is, and it, it actually fries things, but no grease. Makes things crispy, and I'm the salesman now. <laughs> See what happens when it's a divine opportunity? <laughs> Anyways, I was blown away, and now she, everybody who comes across our house or whatever, they end up going out and buying one. Philippians 4, is anybody there yet? (laughs) Verse 4, what does it say? Rejoice in the Lord always, I say what? Rejoice, let your gentleness be known known to all men that the Lord is at hand, but be anxious for what? Nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Remember, the enemy always likes to push us. He wants to push you to debt. Amen? Be anxious or no. Don't let him push you. Why? Because when you get pushed, you miss opportunities. I'm going to close in Romans 8, 18. Romans 8. Divine opportunities, are you expecting them? Amen. Amen. They're coming. Make sure they're from God. (laughs) They're being released. Now, I want to share another thing before we read this. Because... One of the things about praising and worshiping and getting in God's presence because you're exchanging everything of yourself and your presence. Holy Spirit will come and he convicts, he's gentle. You know? And if you don't hear it the first time, he comes again. And hopefully he comes again and slaps our head, you know? So we don't miss it. But he, one of the things he's always trying to do is bring us to a place of opportunity in divine order but if he sees something is moving us out he comes quickly hey hey no not that and you know sometimes it's almost like i gotta do something when you gotta do something don't i gotta do something don't until you have confirmation that this is of god opportunity a divine opportunity. I've seen it happen many, many times. And I've had people come to me and tell me, man, I know that this is God. And I had no witness in my spirit. And thank God, God intervened. But I'm just sharing with you, that's why he says, repent. Amen? Turn away. And we get more of that. The more God's presence is with us and the more we're filled with the Holy Spirit, you will look for conviction. 
you will look to repent for something. Or else you're just justifying it. You're reasoning it. And you're letting the enemy play you if you continue in that path. In Romans 8, 18, let's speak it together. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to fertility not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with what? Birth pangs together until now. Not only that, but we who also, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. For we were saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance, which is also endurance. Likewise, the Spirit also helps uh, in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself makes what? Intercession. Whoa. For who? Us. That's why praying in tongues is vital. With groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. Whom he justified, these he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he, not with him, also freely give us what? Give us all things. Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen. Who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. Whoa. So we got the Holy Spirit and Jesus making intercession for you. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all things we are what? More than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor death nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord, even when we make mistakes, no matter what. So there's that area of God getting in God's presence because what it brings is that conviction. And when conviction comes, there's repentance. In his presence, there's what I want to call the five-hour five hour full-fold ministry. <laughs> it's the five-hour. It is repentance. It's refill, it's refresh, it's reset boundaries, and it's restore. Repent, refill, refresh, reset, and restore. Amen? I'll say it again. Repent, refill, refresh, reset, and restore. That's why we seek Him with all of our heart when we come into God's presence. So we can what, repent for anything that's offensive to Him, get refilled, Get refreshed. Why? Because it brings back, refreshing is bringing back the mind of Christ. Amen. And resetting is resetting of the boundaries. And restoring is restoring your first love. Always restoring your first love so the Lord is always before you in everything you do. Amen? Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. And we thank you for divine opportunities. Let us not miss those opportunities of escape, opportunities of blessing, opportunities of intervention. Let us not miss those things, but keep us alert and vigilant for your glory in Jesus' mighty name.
Everybody said amen.